These days I'm finding a persistent smell of ashes. It's very strong in my house, which was consumed by a fire, but I know that it's not everywhere. Still, I find myself looking for a fire in, in random places. Trauma systematically affects our body and our brains, and any situation that makes you feel overwhelmed, frightened or helpless can result in trauma. It doesn't matter if what other people think about the situation. For something to be traumatic, the only important thing is how you feel. The impact of trauma ha can have many effects in our brains. For example, that it increases the reactivity of the sympathetic nervous system, which is the one in charge of the fight and flight response. And that doesn't, if we are in that situation, we are not able to learn. The other thing that affects is the prefrontal cortex. It decreases his size, and that makes us not really able to take, to plan and to take the good decisions. And it also affects the hippocampus, which is the one that related to learning and memory. When we go through these experiences, uh, our ability to learn gets impacted. Our ability to regulate our mood and our emotions gets impacted also. And our ability to form soci social attachments is also affected. Building self-awareness is very important in this process. It will help you to navigate the impact of trauma and develop compassion towards others and yourself. Let me share three things, the three elements that help us to go through this traumatic event of losing our home and how you can leverage for yourself and to support others. One, building self-care habits. Mental health, self-regulation, mindfulness, all these practices cannot be leveraged just when we are hurted. There are muscles that need to be developed a long time so that they are ready when we need them most. You can, find, you can look for whatever works for you to help you build your own resilience and self-care, but I find that it is absolutely necessary to have at least 10 minutes a day focus on yourself. Self-care practices such as yoga, meditation or breathing exercises have been proven scientifically to help us regulate our emotions and manage trauma. Two, self-directed learning. When you take the ownership of your own learning and development, you start losing, feeling less like the victim of your life and more like the owner of your destiny. We have talked a lot about youth empowerment and self-directed learning as a powerful educational practice, but we haven't mentioned so much how the degree at which we have embraced it in our own lives, learning about web design, digital communications, pedagogy or coaching, for instance. Um, and the thing is that when these things happen, not just for yourself or for youth, for others, whenever something unexpected, when the world keeps changing, when you need to adapt, you might feel uncomfortable, you might feel sad in, in our case, but you will be confident on your ability to learn and to adapt to this new situation. Three, building relationships. When we prioritize relationships over achieving tasks and goals, we change group dynamics. Caring for people matters and it has a deep impact with unpredictable and magnified ripple effects. But like self-care practices, communities do not develop overnight. It's something that we, it's a continuous process that we have to keep working on. We all encounter distress, burnout and trauma in our lives. And these skills and techniques are something to build up along your life so that whenever these things happen, you're ready for them uh, and you have built your own resilience. So I really invite you to work on your self-care, on your self-direction in learning and building community.